Hi, my name is Andrew Chow and I'm 56 years old. I'm an angel investor right now. And a lot of you listening out here, maybe more than 50 years old like me, you will find that you do not have enough time or it's too late for you to build wealth. This video is for you. Okay, so for people above 50, their limiting belief is it is no one wants me, right? I'm too old. You're not too old. 50 is a new 30, really. Number two, I think a limiting belief can be that you need money to make money. No, you don't need money to make money. You need wisdom to make money. You need opportunity to make money. You need insights to make money. You need experience to make money. I work hard for many years in my life, but somehow I don't see the money. I don't find the money. And I think a lot of you listening to me right now will feel the same. You work hard all your life. You try to save, but your wealth didn't increase. So what happened? I discovered that what I lacked was financial literacy. And of course, I have contacts, I have knowledge, I have tons of wisdom. But because without the knowledge of how money works and how investment works, I am very hampered by what I can do. Only after I discover what can be possible, then I see steady stream of income coming in. And I'm sure after my sharing, you can do the same today. Okay, so the RP system is a word coined by myself. So R stands for residual. P stands for passive. H stands for hyperactive. Now, let me explain. Residual income is really what you can do once you work out for once, the benefit comes all the way, right? Even eternity. Passive income is you can do it fast, you can do it well, money will come. If you don't do it, money stops coming. Hyperactive is really once you know the system, once you put in a little bit of seed money, if you know the right strategy, it will grow. Residual, the passive and the hyperactive all has different risk level. So if you are someone very risk adverse, please just focus on residual income because you have lowest risk. And if you are a little bit low risk tolerance, that means to say you can take a bit of risk, then you go for passive income. You have to invest your time on training, on coaching, on mentoring, on consultancy. If you are very high risk tolerant, then you go for equity investment, angel investment, and option investment. So in essence, before we talk about strategy, you have to ask yourself, what kind of risk can you sustain? What kind of risk can you afford to take? So never, never invest money that you can't afford to lose. So savings is savings, retirement is retirement. Money that you can, you can burn, i.e. you can burn, these are the money you should go and put into hyperactive. So the strategy is to identify what are some of the residual income sources will be this. Can you convert your wisdom into online products? Online product means training courses. Online product can mean ebook. I have written a few books and those experiences help me to create a lot of products right now. I even created some card games. I even created some board games. So these are my residual income. That means to say, once I created them, the, the income will just flow. Passive income, it's really, you love to be in the game. You love to roll out your seat. You want to uh, take part, take an active role in it. So for example, you love training, or before that, maybe you love coaching, right? Now coaching is a culture. Everybody wants coaching, right? And then maybe some people will like you and invite you to be a mentor. Wow, that's it. Mentor, you. You transfer your wisdom to the person you want to develop. And after that, maybe the corporate likes you, the corporate wants to hire you as consultant. So that is passive income. Now, last but not least, hyperactive income. That is where it's all on your own. You use your judgment. You want to invest in equity. Equity is the simplest, actually. The second packet is in the angel investing where you invest in startup. You invest in the next generation, right? So take for example, you believe that AI is the next future of the world and there are some startup founders, maybe 25 years old, they have a brilliant application using AI to solve certain uh, detection of cancer cell. And now, you, if you like healthcare sector, you can invest in that. So when you do angel investing, you're investing in people. When you do equity investing, you're investing in the market. If you do options trading, you're investing in your own judgment. So there you go, three different strategies for three packets of uh, income stream. 
So for hyperactive income stream, you talk about two important things. Number one, diversification. Number two, due diligence. Let me talk about diversification first. So whether you invest in the equity market or the angel investing market, you have to diversify. Now, how do you diversify? Very simple. Number one, you diversify based on sector. Now, what's the difference between a sector and an industry? A sector make up of many industries. So don't just invest in IT, invest in medical, invest in uh, uh, consumer electronics. You must invest in different sectors so that your risk is spread out. Number two, invest in different stages of the startup. So some startups are pre-idea. They have a faint idea, but they haven't developed yet, right? There are some startups whose stages are, okay, we got the idea, but we don't have no money to develop the idea. Great, those are seed level. And then there are some startups, oh, we developed the idea, we are selling it already, but we need more scaling. Those are post seed. Series A, Series B. So you invest in different stages. So some are very, very young, you need mentoring. Some are very advanced, what they need is money, funds, cash, right? And of course, third one, invest in different locations. So a lot of people say Asia is the next feature. Of course, you invest in Asia. But now you are talking about the Joe politics, right? You have the West and the East. The East is only China. So you pick you pick your trust. Whether you want to trust in the West, in Europe, or you want to do business with China, India, Brazil. So today, it's really, really good that today we have a variety of locations that we invest in and everybody is promising. If you want to do due diligence on a stock, it's easy. You go to places like Seeking Alpha, it can, took, it can have all sorts of financial reports. So that's no problem. The difficulty is in angel investing. Now, startup, he's 25 years old, he is a co-founder, his team is only three of them, and he's not even having a permanent office. All he has is ideas. What kind of due diligence do you want to do, right? There are only very little due diligence. You only need to trust the story. But as I said before, you are investing in a person. You have to like the person. That is your due diligence. If you have some idea about this person, somehow I just find this guy not trustworthy, somehow I think he's not telling me everything, then don't invest in it. You must 100% like the guy. You must find that he is receptive to mentoring. If he's not even listening to you, if all he needs is your money, then I suggest you put your money somewhere else. So, diversification and due diligence are two very important things that governs the way we invest in hyperactive revenue stream. Okay, what are some of the critical success factors for all these three to go in line or even isolatedly is this. Number one, you need determination. You need to be accountable to yourself. You need to be driven, you need to be disciplined. Now, anyone can say that to you, right? But the fact of the matter is that we are all weak. So what do you need? Step two, you need to find an accountability partner. You need to find someone who is just like you same passion, same objective, maybe same goal. You keep each other in check. You always check with each other. Hey, how are you doing right now? How are you developing that course? Are you progressing in your mentoring journey right now? Are you making money? Are you underwater in a stock market? You need to check on each other. Now, if two is not enough, you go to step three. You find a mastermind group. You find three, four, five people, and then everybody take turn to be accountable everybody take turn to give the best to each other and you know what it's like you're having five six hits in one body right so let me repeat number one you need discipline personal number two if you can find a buddy a partner to be accountable great number three you can find a group of people even better form a mastermind okay so tracking your financial growth a lot of people will be thinking about, okay, how much money I'm gonna make in six months, 12 months. Now I look at it differently. Money, the absolute number is not important. You gotta enjoy the journey. Even the first $10,000 to you is sweet, right? So the first 10,000 from your online product, wow, you are so happy. First 20,000 from YouTube uh, income stream, you're very happy. But what I like to really share is this. Challenge yourself in the first six months, Right now, whenever you start to make a choice to do residual income, if you want to develop an online product, do it in six months. Make your first dollar in six months. If you want to try a hand on passive income, 
you must immediately start after you make the first dollar of residual income because now you have a track record you are starting to make money you can now talk to people to say that well i make enough money now i want to give my personal time to you so you can try head on training on coaching on mentoring it takes a bit of skills but you'll get there the last one hyperactive income i don't advise it Un unless you have two years experience in managing residual and passive income. The reason is this. you need to understand how business works. You need to understand how money works. And the last thing, you need to understand how the world works. Right? A lot of things is just a PR story. You must find out what is the story behind the story. Okay? So that is the trigger success factor. Okay. So what are some of the challenges that prevented people from achieving their wealth, their financial freedom out of whatever bucket that you have, it's number one. They try to do it alone. Never, never be a rainbow. You will never be good enough. No matter how smart, how hardworking you are, you need to have a team. So I just mentioned previously, you need a buddy, you need a mastermind. That's very important. Number two, you don't invest in automation. Automation is so important. You gotta learn what Zapier can do for you, what IPTT can do for you. You gotta understand what AI can do for you, how they how they even generate the script and then do a video. In the past, it used to be I write the script, the video appears. Or now you have to you you can actually generate the script and then a video together. So it's really amazing that today you never become a content creator. You become a content curator. You learn to write better story. You learn to analyze data a little bit more. So the last one would be, I think we are complacent. So if you're complacent, chances are you'll be, you'll feel that just with a little bit of success you have, you begin to slacken. And I see a lot of people, right? The growth path goes like this, and then they're doing very well, and then they start to decline. Why? Because they are complacent. The, the worst time is when you feel that you have enough. You must always feel that you don't have enough. You have still a lot more things that you want to learn. Still a lot more things you want to do. So if you tell yourself that I'm going to keep going, age is not a factor. My mom is 79 years old, she's still learning, right? She still want to have a PayPal account. She still want to do e-commerce. She can still leave you a voice message. She can take a picture and annotate to me. At 79, 80 years old, it's amazing. So, back to my same point, you will have to be a lifelong learner. Without learning, there is no progress. I think as I look back in my life, one of the deciding factors of success is I always want to be an active learner. I learn by asking questions. I learn by asking stupid questions that I think is stupid, but maybe the answer is very intelligent, right? If I ask a stupid question and somehow the person who answered me didn't think about it, he learned something new too, and the way that he described to me, we all learn together. So, I think we have to be a learner. When was the last time you read a book? When was the last time you listened to a podcast? When was the last time you asked someone for advice? When was the last time you sat down with coffee over somebody who's an expert and you give you advice but you're not listening? So, another thing is this, that we have biases. Just because you have some past failures on investment, don't think that all future investment will be the same. Just because you did an online course and it failed miserably, doesn't mean that your next ebook will not be successful. So don't let the past decide the future. That is the golden advice I want to give. And that is always the limiting belief that people have. Past failures equals future progress. It's not true. There are six things that I think is very important this is my last advice to any one of you who want to be successful. Number one, you've got to be a lifelong learner. Lifelong learning doesn't mean go for a webinar, go for a seminar, or go for a course all the time. It can be reading a book. It can be having a drink with someone who can share things to you. It's very important to keep learning. Number two, you need to travel. Why? Travel, it's opening up your perspective. Travel is really a thing that refresh your mind and you build muscles in your mind. You see new things, you talk to new people, you see new opportunities, you go for it, right? Number three, you got to embrace AI. AI is everywhere. AI comes to you. 
Very soon, you'll find Microsoft, Google, all the application in the world all have some AI in it. All right? You can you can tell yourself you don't believe in it. You you prefer to work it on your own. You don't trust AI. But essentially, if you don't want to learn AI effectively, what you are saying is, I'm willing to work ten times harder. I'm willing to spend ten times the amount of time on the same job. Are you willing to do that? I'm sure that as you get older, time is on your side. Number four, you need to embrace this community of learning. You need to really connect with people. And one best way is on social media. If you don't have a social media presence, people will not know how good you are. You see, we are all very good in what we do. We are just not very good in telling people how good we are. Last one is that community brings you a lot of opportunity and the opportunity will feed back to different buckets. So maybe you know of another angel investor from your hyperactive income stream and then you can do something together. Maybe you can create a new product that you can sell online together. Maybe you can conduct a course for angels to invest in startup. So it is in fact now a triangle. The golden triangle will always move, right? Now, you may be wondering right now, where is active income? Now guys, let's be honest. We've been doing active income all our life. You have been having a salary, right? So right now, if you do not have a salary, you can forget about active income. Don't think about active income. If these three buckets works well, they become a steady income and steady income is really all we need. So lastly, I just want to encourage, I'm someone who only gained financial literacy just five years ago, when I was 50 years old. And today, I feel that this journey is getting started. After six years, I learned many things, and I'm willing to share this to as many people like me, 50 and above, as possible. And if all of us can retire happily, especially those of us who depend on our CPF and our saving, you know very well, it's not enough for retirement. So let's have a better retirement. Let's have a retirement that we all enjoy work and life at the same time. So thank you very much.